Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back finally for another question narrative video. And today's video, I'm actually going to be addressing whether or not Tartaria could actually mean Kingdom of Hell. And I have a reason for thinking this. Now, first of all, I want to point out that there is no denying that Tartaria existed. Right here is an old map of Tartaria. You can find lots of maps of Tartaria. Um, sometimes it's called Tartary, sometimes it's called Grand Tartary, sometimes Tatar, I'm not sure how they pronounce that, but it's the same place. And we have been using it in the mud flood genre, a lot of times synonymously with the look of the more advanced buildings and what seems to be a worldwide civilization that was hidden from us. And so I'm not denying that any of that ever happened. What I have been taking issue with though, is the fact that, and I have been guilty of this myself, is that those of us who are believers have been referring to Christ's millennial kingdom here on earth as possibly being Tartaria. And we have been calling it Tartaria. And I have to actually thank someone um, named Logan. This is his channel. And I mentioned it on another video that I did. He actually left a comment and he, he kind of admonished me. He was like, what, what are you doing? Do you realize what Tartaria means? Do you realize where the term Tartaria comes from? And he was kind of irritated with me. And looking back, I would have been, I'm irritated at myself for not realizing this. So I want to thank him for pointing this out to me because he's right. Um, a lot of times we can get so sucked into certain um, theories that we're not looking at the big picture and we're not realizing that words matter. So here we are as believers referring to, you know, Christ's millennial kingdom here on earth as ha possibly having already happened. And we're referring to it as Tartaria. But let's look at where that term, where that name Tartaria probably came from. What is Tartarus? Have you ever heard of Tartarus? Now, I'm honestly shocked. I'm mad at myself for not putting two and two together because I love Greek mythology. And I knew what Tartarus was just from Greek mythology. And I also knew that Tartarus was mentioned in the Bible. And yet I was somehow unable to make the connection for myself, just intellectual laziness, I guess, between Tartaria and Tartarus. So what is Tartarus? In ancient Greek mythology, Tartarus was a horrible pit of torment in the afterlife. It was lower than even Hades, the place of the dead. According to the Greeks, Tartarus was populated by ferocious monsters and the worst of criminals. Yeah, that was Tartarus in Greek mythology. And we believers are, some of us, not obviously not all of us, but some of us believers are calling Christ's millennial kingdom Tartaria. I'm not comfortable with that. The Greek word Tartarus appears only once in the entire New Testament. But in 2 Peter 2, 4, it says, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to Tartarus, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment. Most English versions translate Tartarus as hell or lowest hell. The word Tartarus can be defined as the deepest abyss of Hades. So again, here we are, we're, it's right here in 2 Peter 2, 4. It's telling us that the angels who sinned were placed in Tartarus, which is translated as hell or lowest hell. And yet we're waltzing around calling Christ's millennial kingdom Tartaria. So I'm, yeah, because here's the thing. If the beautiful architecture that we are looking at is indeed from Christ's millennial kingdom, and we're calling it Tartaria, that is a mockery of Christ. And on the other hand, if what we are looking at in some of this architecture, and I think that it's, it's a very likely case that this was not from the millennial kingdom, this might very well have been antediluvian. Um, I'm just kind of going through my pictures here. So, 
if, if these buildings were antediluvian built by the Nephilim, then that certainly would explain some of the occult symbolism that you see on some of these buildings. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call this one a cult, although someone who is better versed in occult symbology might be able to tell better. I just think that's extremely creepy. And you will a lot of times see these faces on some of these, what we call Tartarian buildings. Um, right here, this maybe looks serpentine to me. I can't really tell. I don't know if I can... Even if I zoom in, I can't tell very well, but there is a lot of serpentine symbolism in Tartarian architecture. You will find a lot of owls. Um, you will find a lot of griffins. And from what I have been reading, yes, um, griffins and serpents, they were, yes, they were a part of Tartaria um, culture. And actually, I, I didn't realize this, or maybe I didn't just forgot, but the Scythians were actually the Tartars. And there is a, a connection that I've been reading between the Nephilim and the Scythians in Tartaria. And again, if that is correct, that would explain what we are seeing in these buildings that possibly could be antediluvian or built by the Nephilim. And we've got occult symbol symbology. Now, someone who doesn't know would probably look at that and say, oh, well, that's the Statue of Liberty. And this is from the Paris exhibition but that is actually um, Columbia, the goddess Columbia. So I've been trying to reconcile the fact that there is so much of this symbolism on what we have been calling millennial kingdom architecture. Um, and I've been wondering, well, why? Why is there so much of this occult symbology on what should have been, you know, what, what we believe was built during Christ's reign here on earth. And so some people have said, well, maybe these things were added and, you know, kind of to, to muddy the waters. And that is, that certainly can be the case, but it's also the case that these might not have been buildings from the millennial kingdom. They might have been buildings from that, that were built not of the millennial kingdom, but by, by the Nephilim or, you know, the children of the angels who sinned against God and who were sent down to Tartarus. And now we are calling this Tartaria. And think about it, Tartaria. When you add an IA to the end of a term, that makes it sound like kingdom of. So if Tartarus is the deepest pits of hell, would Tartaria be the kingdom of hell? Can you see where I'm going and why in my later videos, I have not been referring to Christ's kingdom on earth as Tartaria because they would be completely opposite things. So, I mean, let's take a look just at, actually, you know what? No, first I want to go here because I found this to be very interesting. Tartarus, the land of the dead, mysterious underground world. Um, Tartarus, the land of the dead is said to be a sunless, gloomy pit beyond that a threefold layer of night so not exactly what i will call you know christ's kingdom tartarus also contained a variety of regions or kingdoms could tartaria have been one of them possibly up here on the earth's surface the twilight fairyland the elysian fields and many grottos caverns and pits of torments which were reserved for the damned and despised the name Tartarus occurs in the mythology and legends of ancient Greece and was originally used for the deepest region of the world, the bottomless pit. So yeah, that again, the deepest abyss of Hades, where the gods locked up their worst enemies. Not the millennial kingdom. Tartarus was reserved for the grossest sinners who had violated some divine laws. And it's also the place where, as the KJV Bible says, the fallen angels are kept until the day of judgment. Now I want to go over to this one because this also tells us what Tartarus is. And what I noticed here was this. It talks about passages, passages connecting with Tartarus, a vast subterranean reservoir. So I had been reading, I've been reading, I just started reading Genesis 6 um, Conspiracy by Gary Wayne. And it's, it's like an over 600 page book and I'm hoping to do some videos about it eventually, but it's going to take me forever to, to read that book. I'm telling you now, but 
I have I had read some comments about that book and they also talked about how he spoke of tunnels that the Nephilim used to escape the flood that were referred to as being part of Tartarus. Do you see where I'm going? So we have these buildings that we're saying could possibly be antediluvian, pre-flood built by the Nephilim. And then we go back to this, finding out that, yeah, there, there were subterranean tunnels and they very well could have been used by the Nephilim because Genesis 6 tells us there were giants on the earth in those days and also after that. So after the, the Genesis 6, when the sons of God went into the daughters of men. So even after the flood, there were giants and we know this. We know that there were giants. We know just the Anakim, the Rephaim, they were there. They're all in the Bible. And how, how were they there? Well, it's possible that they were passages connecting with Tartarus, a vast subterranean reservoir. So again, we've got this connection of, we'll just say the prefix Tartar with something that is not of God. And you know, I'm going to reiterate the fact that words do matter. And we, especially as believers, especially as those whose eyes are open, we need to remember that. And, and as I said, I was guilty of completely overlooking this. So all you need to do is just search Tartarus. And these are the sorts of images that you get of Tartarus. And, you know, it's... It's horrifying. And to me, when something derives its name from something else, there, there is inevitably some sort of connection. Well, that's a really tiny picture. To me, there's inevitably some sort of connection. So am I saying 100% that Tartaria got its name from Tartarus? No, I can't say that 100%. And I never say anything 100% on this channel. A lot of times I get people commenting, telling me, oh, you have a computer, so now you think you know everything. No, I know that I don't know everything. That's why I'm questioning things. I have, half the time, I have no idea what's going on because none of us do. And that's why we need to ask these questions and never claim that we know the truth about anything. But all I can tell you is that what I see as Tartarus, oh, another very tiny picture, let's move on. What I see as Tartarus, isn't any place that I would like to be. And if the beings who built Tartaria were connected with a place like this, I don't know that I would certainly want to connect that with Jesus. So, and here's another example of how we as believers, we need to realize how much words matter. So, here we have goat, and that is like, you know, just a buzzword nowadays. They, they call celebrities the goat all the time. It stands for greatest of all time. Well, that's what they say that it stands for. It's the greatest of all time. And so it's become really common in the community, especially in younger generations, to call people the goat. And a couple years ago, my kids went to a retreat, and one of my sons came home from the retreat, and he was mortified because the speaker, and I have to say, this was a Christian retreat. The speaker at the Christian retreat was referring to Jesus as the goat. And my son said to me, mom, Jesus wasn't the goat. He's the lamb of God. He's not a goat. He said, goats are satanic. And yeah, my, my kids know this stuff because I'm very open with these things. I want my kids to know these things. So yes, yeah, so my middle schooler was able to make the connection that goat was an awful term to use for Jesus because this is not really what the goat is. This is the goat. This is what they are referring to when they talk about the goat. They are referring to the Baphomet. The Baphomet is a demonic entity. Um, I believe that this is a statue that was placed by the Church of Satan. This is the goat. So to me, equating Christ's kingdom to a place called Tartaria is akin to calling Jesus the goat. Now, as an aside on this Baphomet statue, I just want to point out 
what the, is claimed to be the Baphomet's phallus. What does that look like to you? That, my friends, is a caduceus. Does that look familiar to you? So let's take a look again. The caduceus. I'm not sure what I have here. No, it was just when I was searching it. And here, recognize this. This is a medical symbol. So we are using Baphomet's phallus as a medical symbol. I thought you would find that interesting. But anyway, those are my thoughts and why I will no longer be referring to Christ's kingdom as Tartaria. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.